In this video, I try out the ONTOP DUO Twin Seat Flight Simulator. This 5-screen sim is similar in structure to the Mono Solo, but the cabin is wider, allowing for extra screens and an extra seat, making it perfect to practice and train shared cockpit flying. I teamed up with Jeff Valviano and we flew shared cockpit in the Baron B-58. To make things more interesting, we decided to practice emergency landings. In the first emergency landing, I fly as pilot in command and Jeff kills one of the engines shortly after rotation on takeoff. Turns out the B-58 doesn't climb well with one engine out. In the second emergency, we begin our departure, climb to 1,000 feet, at which point Jeff kills both engines. Okay, we are in the uh, solo, uh, the mono duo, mono duo. The yep. mono duo, we're in a Beech Beechcraft Baron B-58. We are in Fort Myers, KFMY, and today me and Jeff, well, we're in the cockpit and we're going to be practicing two things. First thing is the single engine failure. So Jeff's going to basically pull out the single engine, the right engine, just as we take off, which is you know pretty crit critical phase in the uh, the takeoff. Yes. And what I'm going to have to do uh, is basically glide like with one engine, fly it back, and and land it. And the thing is about this plane, it doesn't like flying with one engine. No. <laughs> Not at that speed. So what we've discovered is that two things. One, you've got to have your gear up. Mm -hmm. Too much drag with the gear down. The second thing is the prop on the failed engine, we're going to have to feather all the way back because if we don't, even that will create too much drag and we won't make it back. Absolutely. So Jeff's going to operate all of that. Uh, yep. You can operate my gears and my flaps. We're on the approach flaps. We're ready to take off. The second thing we're going to then do is we're going to take off to a thousand feet and Jeff is going to kill both engines and we're going to have to glide our way back in. Okay, ready to rock and roll? Yep, ready to do it. Engines are coming in. Beautiful. Her speed is alive. That's 80 knots. Rotate. That's the fail. Yep, it's lost the right engine. Okay, gear up. Gear up. Warning's cleared. Okay, so we are 90 knots with a just about positive climb going on. I'm gonna rudder trim this to get rid of that. Otherwise I'm having to hold the pedal. Yep. And just letting this thing climb very, very slowly. Now you decide your best field. You're going to take a field or are you going to take the airport? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to keep it on a very slow five degree bank. Any more and we'll just lose too much vertical speed. And just trying to keep some kind of a positive climb going on here. I'm going to get up to like 200 feet if I can. Without stalling. Meanwhile, looking out the left window, trying to find the airfield. Trim that back a bit. You're at 85 knots, 240 feet. A very, very slow climb. But a climb is better than a descent right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I've got uh, the range zoomed in on the field there so you can see the actual runways if you need me. Yeah, I'd like to have more of a, a turn to be honest, but... Yeah, you have to be real patient with the, the turn. You just lose so much airspeed if you do it the other way. Yeah. Yeah, we've got 80 knots just about. Okay, I have the runway in sight. Alrighty. I'm going to try and get more of a turn going. Watch that speed, watch that altitude. Looking good. She got 350 feet now, which is quite nice. Oh yeah, when we tried without the uh, 
the feathering of the prop. We were down at 100 feet at like a 75 knots or so. Yeah. It was bad. The gear down or the prop, you just you just can't get lift. No. It, it's horrendous. The weird thing about this plane is like it will glide really well. Yeah, well, it's take an engine out and it just doesn't want to. It just doesn't want to fly. <laughs> All right, airfield is coming up. All right. Gonna level it out now. Yeah, you're on the glide path. I'm gonna try and get on the uh, approach All line. Right. Awesome. Right, let's go gear down. Flaps one. You're down. Flaps approach. And full flaps. Flaps for landing. Oh, you know what? We, we, we were landing flaps because we kept approach flaps in that entire time. Yeah, that's I true. I remember. That's first, true. We found that out too. You had to have some flaps in, otherwise you lost too much lift. Uh, you glide down. Yeah, there, there we are. Very nice. Alrighty, I'll just let it roll down to the bottom here. Yep. That's how you land this thing with a single engine failure on takeoff. Yeah, it's it's a little. Uh, I'll a little be honest. Scary. It's not something I'd like to do in real life. Oh, absolutely <laughs> not. No. It's nice to know that. I mean, in prepared world, you you could make it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Tokyo Drift. Okay. Ready. Right, let me reset my trim. Okay. Go to trim you want to do your you want to do your departure failure off of Roman 1.3? Uh yeah. Okay. Whatever. Doesn't matter. It's gonna be just as much fun. Yep. Okay, I believe we're now set up. Let me start the engine. Get some warnings again. Good. Okay, we're looking good here. Yep. Full takeoff. Uh, this time, Jeff's going to fail both engines on me when he hit thousand feet, Absolutely. and I'm going to have to glide it back in and see if we can actually walk away from this. Yep. It's full power. That speed's alive. Let's go. Up you come. Gear up. Gear up. Just going to trim out for a 10 degree climb. We'll get to 500 and then go flaps up. Right. Yeah, I can't even imagine having an engine failure even at a thousand feet on a departure. Flaps up? Flaps up. No, neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it happily flying out here and then all of a sudden like bird strike or something, both yeah, engines. Yeah. Wow, that's got to be scary. Oh, it would. A thousand birds. Boom! All right, we just lost both engines. Okay, two bird strikes. Down. Let's keep that speed. Let's try and find a runway. Clear your warning. Okay, I have a runway in sight. Yep. It's a heck of a turn, but I think we can do it. We've got a thousand feet so far. Yeah, in testing we have found that trying to make the, uh, the the runway you took off on it's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, full 180. I mean, if, we're lucky here because we've got cross runways. But yeah. If you only had a single runway, this would be pretty tricky. I'd probably shoot the highway. <laughs> mm -hmm. Doing All right. good here. We've got 600 feet at the moment. All right, gear is up. Try and come in more direct because I'm losing 
altitude fairly rapidly. This is almost identical to my approach. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it really is. Alright. I'm gonna wait till the last minute. Yep. Just keep the glide. Glide's good, you got airspeed. Yep. Clip this tree. Right, gear down, flaps one. Gear down, flaps approach. You got it. You got it. Right there. Ooh. And we're down. <laughs> Only just hit the just top. Just barely, of but that was good. That is tough. That is a real tough thing to do. Because you start, you, you get a little confident when you see that you're on that glide path coming, yeah. coming around the corner there, but it's, it's, you lose so much airspeed when you drop the uh, landing gear. Yeah, the last the last 400 feet is is pretty critical. Like if you drop that gear down or the flaps too early, you're done. Yep. And I uh, I failed both engines at 1,100 feet exactly. And it depends. We 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 try to shoot right around 1,000, but like literally 100 feet can make the difference of you yeah. surviving or not. It, it it really is that close. All right, fantastic. That Good was a stuff. Negative. 89 foot per minute landing. That's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> not bad at all. Jeff and I spent probably about three hours flying in the Ontop Duo. We had so much fun. The five screens in the Ontop Duo gives you a 180 degree view, like wing to wing, which kind of makes the other two, the three screeners, look a little bit lacking. As well as the emergency procedures that you just saw us do, Jeff and I also practiced some ILS approaches into thick fog. I didn't show you that footage because the five screens are literally just white all the time. I will say though that having a second pair of eyes and hands in the cockpit under these conditions is very welcome because as the pilot in command, you're entirely focused on what the instrumentation is telling you. We also did some flying around Innsbruck and we set it up for some very turbulent weather just to see what the motion platform would do. I gotta tell you, sometimes it hits you so hard we were quite surprised. I enjoyed it though in the on-top duo and I think out of the three sims I've tried, I'd put this one a close second to the OVO 4.